Look, I love debate. Huh? Ask anyone. Ask my uh, ask my mom. Uh, ask anyone in my tiny ass apartment building. Look, I'll show you. Hey, transgender women are valid. Cis women are fake. Black people should be in video games. In fact, only black people should be in video games. Capitalism is stupid and so are you. The website says this is one of the participating locations, and if you don't bring me a McFucking double mushroom and Swiss burger with extra large fries and six ranch packets, I am I'm going to call I'm going to call corporate. No? No? I'm c yeah, no, I'm calling. Yeah, I'm calling. But hey, stop me if you've heard this one before. You're online, you're arguing, one hand on the keyboard and one hand furiously tending to your hog, and you get a sneaking suspicion that the person you're arguing with isn't arguing in good faith. Maybe they've strawmanned your argument one too many times, maybe they're getting a little too hot and heavy with those insults. They've probably made at least one jump in logic, which seemed a little bit too blatant and convenient to have been an accident, and you get the sneaking suspicion that at least once they've made an argument which is incompatible with one they've made in the recent past, almost like they're not actually being honest about their beliefs. They probably look, at least in your mind's eye, a little something like this, and if you're even a little left-leaning, odds are this person is probably some kind of reactionary. Now, that could mean anything from a angry high school libertarian to a full-on neo-Nazi, but for the purposes of this argument, that doesn't really matter. What matters is that you two are arguing. They're being dishonest, and your rhetorical strategies aren't working. That's how reactionary demagogues maintain their reputation as these untouchable debate gods. They aren't particularly skilled, and they're certainly not right, but they are very good at dominating hapless opponents who came prepared for an intellectually honest debate. Their tactics work, and the more ignorant and uncritical the audience, the better a reception they'll receive. So what do you do? You can't just leave. That makes you look weak. Feel weak. And if there's a neutral audience, they will always interpret departure as a forfeit. Unless, like, your debate opponent is really going after you, like stabbing you in the throat. If you're being stabbed in the throat, please, feel free to leave. But if you're not, if you suddenly abscond from a debate when it looks like you're getting steamrolled, that is bad praxis, friendo. And debate, honest debate, it's not going to cut it here. So again, what do you do? Debate is, like everything in existence, an expression of power. Doubly so when you're debating politics. If you're debating somebody who argues in bad faith, who isn't interested in truth or fair play, you need to express that power in other ways. You need to bully them. Make them feel like shit. Make them angry. Make them upset. Leave them looking weak to whatever audience you might have and never feel bad. They brought this on themselves when they made fair debate impossible, and they are already doing this to you. Let's apply their tactics for the right causes. Let me hit, let me hit you with that, that Prima Strategy Guide shit on dominating your debate opponent through verbal abuse. First of all, never play into the triggered SJW stereotype, there is no faster way to lose the sympathy of a neutral audience. Chan culture and South Park have basically ensured any expression of upsetness or frustration from someone who leans left means a one-way ticket into someone else's cringe compilation. Stay calm. Stay composed. There's no benefit to showing you're angry. They won't empathize with you. They won't respect your passion. They'll just tell you you're triggered and then do the fucking DreamWorks face at the audience. That's what you're here to do to them. You're here to do the DreamWorks face. You also, you can't go too hard. Reactionaries dump a load in their cargo shorts every time they see an opportunity to play the victim. You need to construct a facade of disaffected amusement, as though your opponent is at once beneath you, and yet just absurd enough to prompt some nonchalant mirth and the occasional chuckle. Okay. Hey. You. The viewer. The person I'm talking to. You're not actually in an argument right now, are you? You're listening to me talk. 
So, let's imagine you are arguing right now. Close your eyes. Lean back in that chair. Let your shoulders get loose. Yeah, just like that. That's good. Now, picture in your mind's eye the sort of person you imagine when I talk about a dishonest, right-leaning reactionary. Do they look like this? No, probably not. When I try to picture them, when I imagine the sort of person I'm describing here, I come up with something like this. Heterosexual, white, cisgender, and male. Now, there are exceptions to that mind. Dave Rubin is gay, Lauren Southern is a woman, Ben Shapiro is very short, but by and large, the traits I've listed form the archetypal antagonist in this scenario. So, what do they believe in? I can't help you here. You need to identify your opponent's talking points in real time and respond to them appropriately. Every moral failing and internal contradiction they reveal to you is another opportunity to belittle and disconcert. Knowledge is power. Are they racist? Sexist? Do they dismiss workers' rights and income inequality? These aren't just points to argue against, they're targets for abuse. So, let's stop beating around the bush and discuss how you can actually... First off, identify insecurities. The more you rattle them, the angrier they get. And the better you look in comparison, when you get them worked up, pull back and play the calm, composed intellectual. When they cool down, go back on the offensive. Every time they lash out, you have more ammo with which to insinuate they're irrational. Or, oh, uh, sorry, triggered. Reactionaries hate it when their rhetoric gets appropriated. Calling them whiny, uh, triggered, crybabies, snowflakes, or whatever the fuck, you can get them real fucking angry that way. You can also try calling them stupid, of course. Don't do it bluntly, though, or at least not at the start of the debate. Remember, you don't want to look abusive. Disaffected amusement. Less, you're a fucking idiot. And more like, uh... <laughs> oh, man. You know, I was, um, I was expecting a smarter argument from you. And then following it up with a counter-argument. Just because you've changed your rhetorical strategy doesn't mean you can drop the debate completely. Stay sharp, and interweave logic and derision so finally even your opponent has trouble understanding when they're being insulted. Just one slip up on your part, though, any loose rhetoric, can give your opponent ground to recover to nullify your abuse. I see this happen so often when lefties get frustrated because they don't understand that you cannot moralize a reactionary. Flat out, period, no argument. It just doesn't work on them. They do not care. Here's a list of words to avoid using when you're trying to form insults. Asshole, problematic, toxic, racist, sexist, homophobic, transphobic, shitty, shitlord, bigoted, prejudiced, hateful, unfair, unjust, monstrous. Basically, any term which suggests your opponent should care more about people. They don't, and they won't. To invoke these arguments, or at least these terms, is to implicitly appeal to their better nature. And there's really no guarantee they have a better nature to which to appeal. They'll shrug it off at best, and at worst, take pride in it. Do not moralize reactionaries. You gotta keep looking for those insecurities, though. Are they a white nationalist? Probably frightened of black men's Presumed sexual prowess, those mythically meaty big black dongs. Are they sexist? And a man. Almost certainly vulnerable to having their masculinity attacked. Author's note. Don't do this if your opponent looks like me. Got yourself a capitalist? A temporarily embarrassed millionaire, perhaps. Unless they actually are a millionaire, in which case. Ask them which seasoning would best pair with their flesh. There are so many ways to upset a reactionary, and you're only going to learn them all if you get out there and practice. Most right-leaning people argue dishonestly, so you shouldn't have too much trouble finding an opponent worthy of this rhetorical approach. 
And while you're out there picking arguments, please do remember... Your opponent is a human being with thoughts, feelings, and aspirations. That doesn't mean they think the same of you. There's a good chance that in their ideal world, you'd be dead, deported, or at the very least, disempowered. Don't be afraid to get rude. Ignore their points and pretend you weren't listening. Laugh uproariously at their flustered arguments and imply their beneath response. When you posit your own arguments, phrase them leadingly and force them to answer uncomfortable questions. If they refuse to answer questions which would make them look bad, just keep asking them. Repeat statements. Treat them like a child. Offer to simplify your argument for them. Remember, your goal here isn't just to outsmart them. It's to humiliate them, to overpower them, to beat them at their own game. Remember, they brought this on themselves. They could have been honest. They could have argued in good faith. You're fighting on a battlefield they chose. You're handling weapons they brandished first. Now, there are, of course, stipulations to all this. Remember, your ultimate goal here is to win the argument, to discourage your opponent, and to represent your values positively. There's nothing wrong with an aggressive leftist, but there might be something wrong with a leftist who wins arguments by calling their opponent a Or a That might be bad praxis. Worse praxis than losing an argument to a Nazi, even. Just whatever you do, however you argue, remember the perceived heinousness of your opponent does not excuse proportionally shitty behavior on your part. Gaze not into the abyss, etc. Anyway, let's get to the... Listen, if this video seems a little cringy or strange or mean-spirited, it's only because I've seen the following scenario play out so many times. Two people, um, one of them left-leaning and one of them right-leaning, begin to argue, and things begin as they should. Something's not right, though. The conservative isn't respecting the rules of debate. They're rude. They debase their opponent. They very blatantly move goalposts and switch out arguments, which are mutually exclusive, changing their perspective to match whatever is most politically expedient at any given moment. And the left-leaning person, my, my buddy, they just take it. See, they actually care about rationality and truth and honest discourse and what have you, so they are utterly unprepared to deal with somebody whose rhetorical tactics are designed to humiliate and demoralize. So, they make the better arguments, but walk away feeling like they lost anyway, and whatever audience there might have been comes away with the impression that the conservative demonstrated, if nothing else, strength and conviction. But it isn't strength. It's just another show of force, like breaking a police line and assaulting protesters. And if you're a protester, cute sign and all, and a group of counter-protesters break rank to rough you up, Sign-toting and slogan-chanting aren't going to keep you out of the ER that night. You gotta fight back. Every aspect of this video's production can be attributed entirely to Reddit user Omnic1 and his incredibly selfless decision to buy me a Blue Yeti microphone. Not only did I record my voice on this thing, I also typed the script by carefully tapping the mic stand against my laptop keyboard. I'd also like to thank my many Patreon subscribers, whose kindness and generosity afforded me 70 additional ramen packets this month. I'll, um, I'll list them now, in alphabetical order. Lucas Arajo. And that's all. Thank you, everybody.